fitly into the current situation that we're having during COVID-19. To start with, the agenda is going to be like, the, we're going to discuss the challenges initially. We're going to go through pre-COVID-19 cybersecurity and post-COVID-19 cybersecurity. We're going to talk a little bit about the challenges that customers are having with the respect to the DNS protection and how much DNS protection is adding to adds to their uh, to their infrastructure and to the uh, to the effective uh, effectiveness of the security then we're going to talk a little bit more about the product in details what is the product and how does it is it, dif it, it differs than any other products that we're seeing in the market a little bit more about the predictive intelligence what makes umbrella uh, unique and how we are capable of uncovering attacks even before they happen some deployment scenarios for a quick implementation if if you are interested in doing a pov and why doing a pov adds a lot to your uh, organization so with that let us start about regarding the challenges so cyber security before covid 19 we all had a defined work environment so we knew where our workspace workplace is we know our workforce where they are and we knew how the workload was we always most of the organization already had proper strategy and controls in place because thus users used to come mostly into the offices. They used to work from the offices, from their uh, branches, and everything was ready and the proper strategy and controls were in place. However, with the introduction and, for example, remote workforce users were a minority. We, they didn't, we didn't have a lot of remote workforce. Some organizations did, however, in majority, we did not have a large workforce that is remote. Swift response to incident breach and breaches. So the customers, whenever they had a breach, most of the time the users were inside the organization. So taking action regarding these breaches was very fast from a customer perspective because they had physical access to the PCs. So you can easily isolate the PC and take action, probably format the PC, re-image it, do whatever you whatever your uh, processes uh, indicate that you should do in case of a breach security controls were the parameter security so we had a parameter currently we don't have a parameter and this is something that a lot of organizations did not take into account so during COVID-19 the workplace environment is now borderless so we're living in a borderless network uh, everyone's working from home and the security controls that we used to implement initially are currently not, uh, not working in the right uh, way that we wanted them to. No well-defined strategy in place. No one had a strategy for such a scenario. I don't know about you guys, but we never had anyone. We were always ready because Cisco used to promote working remotely, but we did not have the full defined strategy into uh, working remotely. So there were no strategy in place. I'll give you a couple of examples that I've seen in the market. Uh, a lot of organizations did not have enough laptops for their, for their users. So they went out and bought a lot of laptops. A lot of organizations did not have any controls on the laptops. So they had to implement new controls on the laptops and expand their businesses. This is something that have this, has, has really shed light into how organizations should work in a in such an environment and to implement a true business continuity model with regarding to uh, these kind of uh, pandemics all workforce is working remotely at least with exception probably to healthcare 90 percent to 95 percent of most of the workforce is working remotely for cisco specifically we're 95 percent working remotely five percent only the essential jobs that need someone inside our offices are working uh, are working inside the, an office incident control is becoming extremely difficult taking action protecting the customers while not having physical control, protecting your users while not having uh, physical access it has proven to be extremely difficult nevertheless a lot of the organizations especially the well regulated organizations did not have a processes or did not accept having solutions that would work, work on-prem, off-prem, in a cloud, uh, with the cloud capabilities and a cloud environment. And this is what we have seen. A lot of organizations that bought products from Cisco recently have just asked us to switch their products from an on-prem product to a cloud product to be capable to accommodate 
with all of the uh, changes that we're seeing in the market. Each remote worker is the perimeter now, and this is what we've been talking about, borderless versus border network. Now, COVID has accelerated this transition, at least in our region. We've been seeing this, this uh, transition in multiple regions. However, in our region, we were a little bit conservative regarding the, uh, the change in the network and how the border network is becoming a borderless network. Now, with what we're seeing from a, from a COVID-19 perspective and how things are changing in the, uh, in the world, we're, we are truly seeing that each remote worker is the perimeter now. And the access from uncontrolled devices, this was a, a, a result of the None, there was no uh, well-defined strategy in place. So because the customers or because what we are seeing that customers did not have a well-defined strategy in place, they did not have enough devices for all their users, they did not have the right policies for their users. A lot of organizations were promoting BYODs, for example. So we had a lot of access from uncontrolled devices to the network where we had to enable them to connect through VPN, we had to connect them to be capable of providing uh, access providing access to internal resources, either probably through other solutions other than just the VPN uh, technology. So remote se worker security facts, 81% of breaches, sorry, 81% of breaches involve compromised credentials. At least 52% of respondents to Cisco 2020 CISO uh, benchmark. 27% of organizations are currently using multi-factor. 85% of remote users admit not to using VPN all the time. And this is a great concern uh, that we're going to discuss and Umbrella helps tackling this issue. A lot of users just use VPN on a need to basis rather than using them um, as an additional layer of security. Of course, when you're connecting to your VPN, you're using your, uh, your uh, uh, on-parameter, let's say on-premises, your parameter uh, security products and security controls. However, a lot of or a lot of users i am one of them to be uh, to be honest i only use vpn when i really need to access something that is internal i do not use it as an additional layer of security and this introduces a lot of risks to the risks to the organization 68 percent of roaming users targeted in the recent attack so attackers did not wait till COVID 19 rests and people are back to normal to, so they can uh, launch their attacks uh, again they took advantage of this issue and they started uh, ex uh, extending their attacks and attacking everyone that they have they can. And we've seen a lot of attacks recently with Cisco specifically, where the remote users are being the main target with spear phishing attacks, with uh, accessing their uh, VPNs. So our new reality, and this is a reality that I think we need to admit now that apps and data and more are moving towards cloud. If this was moving slowly in the last period, probably with COVID-19, this will accelerate. Networks transform with SD1. This is already a transition that we've been seeing in the market. Move to direct internet access, more mobile workforce. I think this is a new reality, the new reality now that we're seeing currently during COVID, but after COVID, this is also going to we're not going to have the prior, let's say, 10% maximum of remote workers, of course, or mobile workforce. We're going to see much more, no, uh, bigger number regarding the uh, much bigger number regarding the mobile workforce and the increase in encrypted traffic and SSL 5G. With the introduction of 5G, with the introduction of more encrypted traffic, this is something that is uh, causing a lot of. Uh, gaps in the visibility and the protection that the uh, users are having. So one in four major breaches, uh, one of four organization risk a major breach in the next 24 months. This is a study that has been done by Ponemon. Uh, and the average cost of a breach is going to be around $3.92 million. This is how much a breach is costing currently as per the study from Ponemon. Threats create frequent and costly breaches. So. Also, security teams are still struggling into having uh, the security resources in the region are at least worldwide, not just the region, are very low. Probably security is a zero percent uh, unemployment rate. Uh, and probably there's a negative because there's more jobs than 
people can fill it. So 3.5 million cybersecurity positions will go unfilled by 2021. And orchestration, 79% struggle to orchestrate alert uh, across vendors. So the multi-vendor strategy that a lot of organizations used to have before increased in the number of alerts. Thus, an orchestration was needed to enable uh, lowering the number of alerts so the in, so the SOC teams would be capable of looking into those attacks. We have a different approach with Umbrella and it has proven to be very effective if we block at the DNS layer. So 90% of malware do use DNS in their attacks. And often used, not often monitored, we have seen that 68% of organizations do not monitor their DNS traffic. And this is something that we have noticed recently in, and we've been noticing a lot uh, with the organizations that we are working with. At least one in three organizations have reported that breaches could have been controlled by DNS. And 100% to 200 billion global uh, dollars, global losses could have been prevented by DNS. So there is a very good economical value from the DNS security, and we always urge our customers to look into this untapped uh, control that the customers are not paying too much attention into because DNS by nature was not monitored before. It is not being protected, and whenever you introduce the right protection and the right controls into the DNS, you can minimize the risk that the organizations that your organization is having. So with that, I have started with the challenges. If we're going to talk about, if I'm going to sum up the challenges before we go into what is the product, I can describe the challenges uh, or uh, summing them up into two types of challenges. The first challenge is going to be the change in the work environment and how workforce is fully mobile now. And you have to make sure that you're giving them the right protection for these users. And the second part is the value of having security at the DNS layer. So with these two types of challenges, Umbrella comes as a product that will help you solve these two challenges in a very easy and effective way with a very high uh, effectiveness from a security perspective. So Cisco Umbrella is a recursive DNS service. It's a very basic technology from a DNS perspective. So we're only a DNS resolver, not a complicated technology that you would have to implement inside your organization. We are built into the foundation of the internet, so we got the capability to see the attacks before they were launched. We would be capable, and I'm going to show you how to provide the visibility and protection everywhere. An implementation for an enterprise, if you're doing it on-prem, can take minutes. It's just pointing your DNS towards umbrella, forwarding it, adding your public IPs, and we can have the initial protection quickly. I always urge my customers whenever I'm talking to them, whenever I'm presenting my product, even if they don't feel like this is a necessity now, just record the websites, record the, uh, record the type, the way that you do the implementation in case you're facing any breach, any attack. This would be your fastest and easiest way to get help before reaching out even to anyone. You can get it in minutes. And we can help you integrate with a lot of uh, existing investments before to amplify your uh, security investment. And we're going to go through this in a while. So uh, our IP is 208.67.222.222. Currently, we have a resolver in country in UAE, which gives us a lot of advantages with respect to other technologies that are in the market. So where does Umbrella fit? And where do we, whenever we're talking about Umbrella, would it be before the firewall or after the firewall? Is it protecting me before the antivirus or after the antivirus? So since DNS is the first line of communication, then Umbrella is going to be the first line of defense. So before your firewall will look into it, before anything is going to look into this, whenever you're going to do any communication, and we can say safely now that almost all of the communication currently is uh, domain. We barely have IP to IP communication. So the way that we're going to see it is that, um, so basically the way that we're going to see is that um, DNS is going to be the first line of communication for you and umbrella is going to be the first line of defense. So we're going to be protecting you against any type of attack. And what what is the power of having this on the DNS layer? So the power of having this on the DNS layer is that since we're prior to any 
port communication or prior to any uh, protocol communication and everything is going to start with the dns so we're going to be protecting you against all ports and all protocols and since all devices would use dns as the first line of communication even if it's an iot device if it's a medical device none nothing barely communicates ip to ip very few very few it's less than 0.001 percent all the communication is IP to IP communication because of the agility you need because if an IP was down you would lose all the connectivity if you're using an IoT device for example so it's a it's part of being robust in your uh, communications so we will be protecting all devices our protocols at any time and this is a true power that umbrella brings to your organization you would notice that whenever you will go and implement the product however whenever we've seen uh, communication let me give you an example quickly. One of the largest attacks that we have seen, a DDoS attack, was the attack on the DYN servers. Probably it was like eight, seven years ago or six years ago. This attack was launched from an IoT device. There was a bug in some of the Chinese cameras that were manufactured and as an IoT devices. And there was millions and millions of those. Instead of infecting millions and millions of laptops, we already had cameras that were connected to the internet. And the attack was launched from there. Imagine if you had connect, uh, protection on the DNS layer for these organizations, then the attack would prove to be uh, non-effective. So, so again, to just to uh, emphasize on how important it is to have the protection on the DNS layer, 15% of command and control bypasses web ports 80 and 443. And this is why it's also very good to have the protection on the DNS layer. And 91% of command and control can be blocked at the DNS layer. These are two researches that we have seen. Another, another important thing that I would like to highlight is that a lot of the ransomwares are even exfiltrating their, uh, their encryption key via DNS rather than a regular command and control communication, which makes them evade all the security techniques that you're having currently. Having this security on the DNS layer will also add a lot of value into protecting against this annoying type of attacks that we've been seeing for the past couple of years. So, in brief, visibility and protection for all activity anywhere. So, how Umbrella is going to add value to your organization? So, if we're going to take it on-prem, we're going to be protecting your headquarters, your IoT, and your mobile devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi, just by forwarding the DNS towards Umbrella. For the roaming uh, users, for the off-network, we're going to be protecting branches. Let's say branches now are not connected uh, via MPLS, everyone has a direct access to the branch. Instead of, and I have a lot of customers in the region where they have retail retail, uh, retail stores. These retail stores currently, they have two to three employees in each, or, in each uh, store. It, even investing in a firewall, a very small firewall would seem more expensive and less efficient if they have 12,000, let's say, uh, branches, it would, it will not be a very effective way of doing the implementation and maintaining it. So managing 12, uh, 2,000, for example, uh, branches, 12,000 hardware boxes where you have to update them every once in a while is not as effective as you want it to be. Using Umbrella, for example, by just forwarding the DNS and giving them all the protection that they would need in such organization is a more effective way that our customers have seen uh, uh, worldwide. Um, I'll give you a, a, another example that we have in the U.S. Pizza Hut, for example, in the U.S. specifically has more than 1,000 branches and it all uses Umbrella and it has been very effective even from a cost perspective for these customers. So the branch offices, if you have a very wide number of branches where you need to protect everyone, they all have direct internet access, then Umbrella is the fastest, easiest way to have a consistent way of doing the policies and a very effective way and a fast way. Uh, roaming laptops, whenever we're talking about roaming laptops we're, and roaming users, we can protect the uh, Apple users, we can protect in the Chromebook, we can protect even the Windows, and even if we're talking about mobile devices like Apple, we are capable of protecting them. We currently have the, in beta testing all the Android devices but uh, Android mobiles, and this is in beta testing, but we can also, we can say that we can protect them from now. So we're protecting all office locations, any device on your network, roaming laptops everywhere and every port and every protocol. This is the true value that you are getting from Umbrella. You're getting the protection 
or anywhere at any time. If we're going to take an ex a quick example from umbrella perspective, I am using VPN that's from any connect. If I'm not connected to the, any connect to my VPN, automatically the umbrella agent is fired up and connected to umbrella and giving me this protection. So it does not matter if I'm connected to VPN or not connected to VPN. It does not matter if I'm in office or out of office. Umbrella is giving me the right type of protection and the right type of controls that we can give to a user from an application protection and from a content filtering perspective. So how does Umbrella work? It's a very simple uh, way of doing the security, uh, doing security for Umbrella. And basically for any DNS request that goes to Umbrella, we have one of three answers. If it's a good domain, a good website, we're gonna reply the IPs and you're gonna connect to it normally. If it's not a good IP or a bad one or a blocked request, here a blocked request can be one of two. Either there's a security threat for this block request, could be a command and control, it could be a malware, it could be crypto mining. We have multiple categories that we can block against. To brief them, they could be a phishing website, a malware website, command and control. It could be a dynamic DNS website. We have the capability of detecting newly seen websites and we can also protect against DNS tunneling. DNS tunneling is the technology where you exfiltrate data using the DNS traffic, DNS queries. So we have one of these security, they could be a threat and we block them, or it could be a policy that you have. So Umbrella is not just a security product, it is also it can also pro, uh, give you uh, content and category filtering, and we can also block their applications. So if you, let's say you wanna block all file storage applications, you can do that using Umbrella for all the roaming users and all of the on-prem users. And this is a true, need that we are seeing a lot of users need in the current period they need to drop to block dropbox on all their users for example so they will not share data outside their pcs or already they have usb blocks for example but accessing internet is open for them and they can upload anything to the uh to the cloud so having umbrella to protect and to block the, the dns traffic is has proven to be of great value to their to these uh, organizations so it's either a blocked request or a safe request. But we also have a third uh, category that we can do, which is the uh, risky domains. Risky domains are the websites that Umbrella from a DNS level cannot be 100% sure that Umbrella is gonna be uh, effective and protect uh, effectively and uh, they have the decision. I'll give you a quick example. Dropbox, for example, as a website is a clean website. But you can upload a malicious uh, file into this website. So we want to make sure that this link that you're accessing, although Dropbox is a good website, the link that you're accessing and the file that you're accessing is not a malicious one. And this is how we will be capable of doing it, the proxying it to our intelligent proxy. So safe and blocked. And if it's not safe and blocked, then it's going to the um, safe and blocked. If it's one of not of one of these decisions, that's going to the intelligent proxy for deeper inspection. On that level, we can have DNS and IP enforcement. We can even do SSL decryption. So we can add multiple layers of investigation and protection on top of just being DNS using our intelligent proxy. The concept that we're talking about is no longer a secure web gateway. So we're not a proxy. It's not yet. We cannot call. We do not fall into the category that is a proxy now with all of these additional features. We fall into the category which is a secure internet gateway. We will be looking not just at port 80 and 440 like a regular proxy does. We will be looking at all ports and all protocols. And this is where the value of Umbrella comes into uh, to our customers. We can do a lot of what a proxy does with the current uh, features that we have in our product. I'm going to talk about our roadmap and where we're starting and where we're going. But we, we will be capable of adding a lot of additional stuff uh, and features into the uh, protection that we're providing you with Umbrella, with the DNS protection, the DNS tunneling, which usually the proxy does not look into this. So basically, currently, <coughs> we have we have the DNS protection, and this is how we are uh, implementing the layer of protection that we have. And then we can add into it HTTP and HTTPS 
inspection. We can have a custom URL list that you can block and custom domain list, of course. We have antivirus that is in our intelligent proxy that will look into the uh, files that you are being download, you're downloading. And we also have our AMP technology, which uses SHA-256 uh, to look into the uh, files and any, uh, so you're getting the AMP Unity protection that we have in all of our products. And this looks into almost 150 file types. So this is how comprehensive the solution is. Yes, it's using its DNS as a base, but whenever we're giving you the protection with our intelligent proxy, it adds a lot of uh, features into it. So our vision as a SIG and the secure internet gateway, a lot of these features already exist, but not in UAE in our region. They exist in the US, but we're developing this and we are upgrading our resolvers in uh, UAE to have these uh, uh, features and these uh, capabilities available inside uh, for our customers in UAE. So we started, and this is how Umbrella has started and where uh, is our roadmap and where we're trying to reach from a, from a roadmap perspective. So we started as a DNS security product initially where we just block on the DNS level. It's a good website or a bad website. Content filtering on the DNS layer. Then we added the selective proxy for these risky websites where we needed to have a little bit more inspection to make sure that we are uh, detecting the right uh, attacks and the right uh, websites. We added uh, on a later stage the file inspection where we started looking into antivirus, with the antivirus into hash values and with AMP we started looking into the SHA values for that and to give an additional layer of protection. App discovery and control, this is a feature that we added where now you can view all the apps and the cloud apps that are being accessed from your network or your roaming users to the cloud and add policies into that. I need to block this website, uh, these apps. I need to block, for example, all social uh, social uh, social websites, or I need to block all file sharing websites, or I need to block, for example, all uh, VPN uh, VPN applications. So you can do this even on an application level. So after we implemented app discovery and app control, what I'm saying now, they are not, they are, some of them exist in the US, but they don't exist in our region. This is why they are still in gray. But we added, for example, in US, and we're moving this to the UAE, and COVID-19 just delayed things a little bit, but we're gonna have a cloud delivered firewall, a full from a layer seven delivered firewall with our umbrella packages. We're going to add full proxying into Umbrella. So we're going to have, so what we're doing is offline protection. We don't call it inline inspection most of the time. We're going to add full inline proxying. These are helpful for some use cases that customers have. For example, if they want to do bandwidth limitation, they want to do time-based policies. Currently with Umbrella, we cannot do them. But whenever we implement the full proxying, this is going to be an easy feature to implement. And the cloud DLP, where we're going to also have the full DLP uh, capabilities into Umbrella. So what Umbrella is going to be with SIG is your full stack of security products, rather than having to do the investment uh, for on-prem and off-prem, you're going to have just one license, and this is going to be providing you the, site, the same level of protection and the same packages and the same stack of uh, products that you're seeing in SIG on-prem and off-prem with just one license, since we our licenses are all protecting on-prem and off-prem. So just to give you a quick example, if you have 100 employees, then you just pay for 100 employees and you will get the protection on-prem and off-prem easily. So <laughs> this is in brief the product. I'm gonna dig a little deep of uh, regard into intelligence, how we do the intelligence and what makes Umbrella unique. So. If I'm going to be, so the, protecting on the DNS layer is very easy. Even the ISP can do just add some threat intel feeds into the, into the DNS and they, at least they can do a similar job to what Umbrella does. However, with the intelligent proxy, with all the features that we have, we've been unique. But what truly makes us unique in the market is the predictive intelligence and how we look into the attack and how we've been capable of predicting attacks before they happen. So. We have multiple uh, feeds and multiple ways where we uh, feed Umbrella into it with the intelligence. So Cisco Talos, our threat intelligence group, which is the largest threat intelligence group, are 300 plus uh, researchers. 
inject umbrella with uh, with feeds every four hours. But umbrella also has uh, has security researchers that feed it and analyze traffic. I can share with you a lot of uh, presentations that we we participate as an umbrella research team with Black Hat, with DEF CON, with all the hack, very famous hacking conferences that we see in the market. And we see around 200 billion requests per day. 200 billion requests makes us probably the second largest DNS resolver worldwide and the largest one that implements security into it. And we do a lot of analysis with these data that we get. And I'm going to go through the analysis and how we are different than any other product in the market. So 200 billion requests per day. We have at least 90 million daily active users, 25,000 enterprise customers, and we cover 160 countries worldwide. This is by far one of the largest deployments that you would see in any other target, any other solution. And the, the good thing about having this broad uh, customer base is that if we see an attack in one country, then you can make sure that we're analyzing it, using our algorithms and protecting you against it. And every customer that we have worldwide is protecting in minutes. Our efficacy, so we discover on a daily basis a 3 million plus daily new domains. We identify at least 60,000 daily malicious destinations per day, and we enforce at any time a minimum of 7 million plus malicious destinations while resolving DNS. This is unbeatable. In matter of fact, after the call, if you want, if you reach out to us, I can share with you the presentations and also, I can share with you the report that has been done by AV test, which tests most of the most of the DNS based security solutions and the cloud proxy where Umbrella by far scored higher than any of the other DNS security products that we see in the market and even the proxies that we're seeing in the market, specifically Zscaler and uh, Force Point and also uh, Semantic the Blue Post. So, from a test perspective, from an efficacy perspective, Umbrella with this current deployment, the intelligent proxy and the DNS uh, layer protection, we've been capable of detecting more webs malicious websites than any of the other products that we're seeing in the market with a minimal false positive rate. And this is what makes us very unique. So we we'll go into details a little bit of how we look into cyber attacks. So the anatomy of a cyber attack, a cyber attacks Everyone believes that starts with the patient zero. So whenever a, an antivirus sees it or a sandboxing sees this, this is where everyone believes the attack starts. And then we have the target expansion, wide scale expansion, and probably people start building their defense, their signature defenses. However, the attack starts long time before, right? It starts whenever someone registers the IP, do some uh, intelligence and reconnaissance infrastructure setups. So before, let's say, before launching a rocket, you have to set up the rocket, build the rocket, get the deep, get the get the ammunition and everything before you're launching a rocket. Similarly, the malware, you need to register the command and control. And this is where Umbrella starts looking into these type of attacks. And this is why we've been capable of predicting some of the attacks even before they happen. And to highlight a little bit more about the malwares and how our attacks structured in these uh, uh, current times, malwares specifically, uh, they are uh, designed by uh, either criminal groups that want the malware to live as much as possible, or there is people who sell malwares to organizations. They create a malware and there's a malware as a service, and they sell it with a warranty. So if you go into the dark web now and you try to purchase a malware, they will tell you, I'll give you a malware that would live for six months. If it does not work, I will give you another malware. It's a nice type of warranty that the, the hackers are providing currently. So how do they make it live? Is that by inserting technique live for six months or as much as possible, they design techniques into the malware where it can automatically look into other domains in case the domain was blocked on a network level. And Umbrella, and I'm going to go through this, has been capable of detecting these type of mechanisms and predicting the next stop of the attacks uh, of the domain to block it. And this is where we've been very effective from a predictive uh, capability. So a quick example, I'm going to talk about Loki. This is an old example, but it, because it has all the aspects of how we've been capable of unblocking a lot of parts of this attack, I always like to bring this uh, example again. Um, it was a very famous ransomware, and still, have, if you go, a lot of organizations still seek command and control communication from Lockheed. 
So that boxers was one of the domains that uh, they were uh, part of the attacks for uh, for Lockheed. So if you see at between six October and eight October, we started seeing larger number of DNS queries and what we call uh, spikes in the internet regard uh, with uh, regards to this uh, domain. Automatically, our algorithms start functioning and they define these type of attacks. So we have a specific algorithm that is called spike rank model, where we're capable of analyzing these type of spikes and determining if it's a ransomware, if it's a malware, it's a phishing or a domain generated algorithm, and we can block them. So we can start blocking from analyzing the DNS traffic. Now you see the value of having 200 billion requests and how much analyzing these type of uh, DNS queries adds value to our organization and adds value to our intelligence. So we detect, we started seeing sudden spikes and we determined that tag boxers is a malicious website. So we blocked it. But, it, but with this blocking, I can say a lot of organizations, a lot of, let's say, technologies would be capable of detecting it one way or another and blocking it. What we do next is what makes us also very unique in the market. Once we blocked that boxes, we did not stop there, right? We went further and we looked at who registered this website domain. And we found out that sumia101 at gmail.com was the domain that registered tagboxers.com. So there is two observations here. Either this is the, the email of the attacker and he registered multiple websites and multiple domains to be part of the attack, or it's a, pre, it's a hacked email that a hacker is trying to hide himself uh, within this domain, within this email. So what do we do next? We go and scan all the domains that are registered by Sumia 101, and we try to see which of those are malicious and which of those are not malicious. If you see here, out of 83 total, we saw six that are currently malicious, and we blocked them. So assuming that Boxers was part of the attack and the hacker, let's say Sumia 101 or who breached Sumia 101, uh, had another domains part of this attack in case that boxers was blocked umbrella would have already discovered these domains and blocked them before they were used and this is where the predictive part starts and if you go to for example if we're going to talk about uh wanna cry wanna cry had a domain generated algorithm which was always communicating to different domains constantly which was impossible to block at one certain point of time and then we associate samples to this domain and we start scanning the internet for similar hash values or SHA-256 values and uh, the IP. So this is the spike rank model that we talked about initially and we started uh, at least discovering discovering uh, the what type of attack we are seeing, domain generated algorithm, exploit kits or phishing and we block based on that. Predictive IP space monitoring is that whenever we get the share value, we go and we see uh, the IP space that, is, that, that this domain is hosted at because there's a very big possibility if the attacker hosted one malicious domain at this IP space that he would be hosting most of them there. He has access to that IP space. So we go and identify all the IPs hosted on the same server and we start scanning if they share the same trend, which could be the domains and the share value. This is how we start looking for the next step of the attack and not just blocking the first instance and and with which every technology does there is no technology currently in the market that does this type of investigation i'm pretty confident of that another i'm gonna go through a little bit more examples before uh, that are not in this website and this slides but one thing that we do if we see all uh, a website that is hosted let's say in china and everyone that is connected to it is purely from UAE, then this is an indication of something that is not uh, malicious. This is not something that usually happens. So we block this. If there's a, there is a bulletproof data centers worldwide, let's say in Ukraine, we have a lot of those where only malicious websites are hosted there. Any websites that is hosted there or any domain that is hosted there, we block it by default because Everyone who's hosted there is malicious. So by default, this is malicious. So we block it. And this is how we've been capable of blocking a lot of attacks before uh, they were launched. One thing that we also block by default, and you can have it as a feature or not, it depends on your organization, is newly seen domains. Newly seen domains are blocked by default because 
because we need to see that we they are usually attributed to attacks before they are uh, no one access a website that has been registered less than 48 hours unless he's a, a, a let's say a, a developer other than that this is not something uh, that we see on a regular basis so when I cry, just a quick example, this is one of the famous ransomers that we've seen. Uh, I just like to show this example is that the domain was registered on May 12. It was queried on May 12 and it was added as a malware on Umbrella on May 12. One good thing that I can mention about Umbrella is we give you access to our intelligence. You can buy that. So it's it comes with one of our packages. So in case you have a website that has been blocked and you as administrators were reached out by your IT users. Hey, why did you block this website? I believe it's a false positive. We give you an instant access to our intelligence to investigate where you can investigate any domain, any hash value, any ESN, any, let's say, uh, email, and you can check what we know about it. So if you got a malware website from your customers, uh, from your users, internal users, and they tell you that this is malicious. I need you to confirm if, uh, if it's a false positive or not. You can just go to our investigate concern and you can get this instant. And this is gives you a very uh, flexible way of operating this product. So what sets us apart from competitors? We are one of the fastest and most reliable cloud infrastructure in the market. We're most open into integration. We can integrate with any product, basically. We have open API integrations to insert any intelligence into Umbrella and we can integrate with any uh, we have also uh, management uh, integration so you can integrate with the sim solution you can integrate with any ticketing system also if you have some uh, most predictive easiest to implement and the broadest from a coverage perspective because we're in the cloud and we are practically dns resolver we have an infinite capacity near to infinite we cannot say infinite near to infinite capacity of hosting domains and our lists are always updated, which gives us infinite processing power and gives us the broadest and the largest malicious destinations and file uh, coverage. You can integrate to amplify existing security. You can block domains from partner or custom uh, systems. For example, you can integrate with AMP Thread Grid. You can integrate with FireEye or any other Thread Grid solutions that you have. Uh, you can integrate also with, uh, for example, a tip technology, like the anomaly where you can feed all the intelligence into it. And you can have your custom integrations with Python scripts uh, or any other type of integration that you have. So I'm gonna go in brief into the deployment scenarios just to show you how easy it is to implement Umbrella. So we have two, two deployment scenarios. The first and the easiest way is just forward from your internal DNS server Usually, if you have a dedicated DNS server technology like Efficient IP, like, F, uh, for example, Efficient IP, Bluecat, Infoblox, or even you have it as a bind server or, or an internal DNS server, you can do that. You just forward to us. Or if you have an explicit proxy, you need to forward also from the explicit proxy. Um, and if you don't, and then you can add it. With this one, you would be only seeing your public IP on the portal and you will not be capable of seeing your internal IPs. And this will give you the same level of protection. However, uh, you will not be capable of knowing who's infected internally and you will not be capable of setting policies per, per uh, users or per IP or per Active Directory user. The second way of doing the implementation, and this is for the on-prem users we're talking about, is that you can have a virtual appliance internally. This is a very lightweight virtual appliance that acts as a DNS proxy. You would be forwarding all the DNS internally into this uh, virtual appliance. If it's an internal IP, internal domain, we're gonna forward it to the internal DNS. You can define the internal DNS um, uh, on the portal. And if it's not an internal DNS, if it's an external one, we're gonna attach the internal IP, we're gonna act uh, to the the request we're going to encrypt it and this adds a very powerful um <clears throat> powerful uh, let's say uh, security additional security with the virtual appliance because dns by nature is sent by is sent uh, clear text and there's a big possibility that a man in the middle attack could happen this is why we've seen some customers are implementing dns set for now for Umbrella specifically, we encrypt the traffic so you can they cannot be intercepted. And we also on our resolvers implement the NSSEC, where we valid we validate on your behalf 
the uh, authenticity of the request and we encrypt the traffic when it uh, uh, in transit to you to make sure that nothing is being uh, manipulated and no record is being manipulated and it gives you a very big and a very powerful uh, additional security uh, features with this uh, encryption i have a lot of military customers that Love Umbrella specifically because of the encryption that we add into this. So this is how we can do it. Yes, we can integrate by Active Directory. You can set policies for Active Directory and group. It's done with the VA and a script that is implemented on the uh, and the script that is implemented uh, and run on the uh, Active Directory uh, servers that you have. This is for on-prem. For off-prem and for remote users, we have one of two. If you're an AnyConnect user, there is a module that can be used with AnyConnect. And you can push it the same way that you push any connect to the ASA or to, let's say, uh, an ICE. Uh, it depends on how you've done the implementation. Or if you're not an any connect user, we have a very lightweight agent that can be deployed and which <clears throat> can be pushed the same way you push any of your products. It's a very lightweight that just redirects DNS and attributes the. Um, attributes the uh, organization ID to the DNS request to make sure that whenever the request reaches our DNS resolvers, you are being uh, protected. This is for the DNS request. So this is how we protect uh, with Umbrella, on-prem and off-prem. Uh, one thing to mention that whenever you're on-prem, we, we assume that you have multiple technologies that will protect on IP to IP basis. So we don't have this as a feature whenever you're on-prem. Whenever you're off-prem in our agents, we have the capability of blocking IP to IP communication and decode communication because we assume we don't have any other products that are being used home or remotely or whatever. With this, I end, uh, let's say, the deployment scenarios. Why do a POV? Because getting the license is the easiest thing you can do with Umbrella. You can just go to signup.umbrella.com get your license instantly, point your DNS, add your public IPs, and done. This is the, the quick, fast way, the easiest way to do the implementation. Memorize this, remember this, in case you're under attack, in case anything happens, you can always do this. And you can always reach out to Cisco team and Alpha Data team, and we, can, we are available at any time to help you with any of your incidents and to help you implement this if you're interested enough. Um, it's very easy. We always provide you a detailed report after the POC. Our customers usually see the value of the umbrella, value of umbrella if they point all their DNS towers umbrella in less than a week. And we have a very possible, the solution is, is relatively on the cheaper end of products, if I can say, because we size per user. If you're below 1,000 users, then the price is, uh, is value to money is excellent, to be honest. Uh, money, money to value is uh, excellent. Um, with Umbrella, with our 200 most recent POVs, 50% uh, uh, encountered APT attacks in our POVs, 82% encountered ransomware, and 77% encountered phishing. This is how effective the product is, and you will see whenever you implement this product and try it. And to end with, we're trusted by a lot of enterprises worldwide. These are the public ones. I wish I can mention every one that is not public, but in UAE specifically, we have a lot of customers, governmental and non-governmental. Uh, we have a large enterprise, we have small enterprises, and uh, it's one of the most uh, valued product that we have in the market and the highest growing market product that we're seeing worldwide and specifically in UAE. With that, I finish my presentation. So, Niveen, uh, I'm happy to take any question if you, if anyone has a question. If not, uh, then thank you very much for your time. We have one question about how different is Cisco Umbrella from Palo Alto DNS Security? So, <coughs> Palo Alto DNS Security is uh, using their uh, firewall, so you need to be on-prem. This is one. With Palo Alto DNS security, you have two types of packages. The first type of package is where they download the DNS, the DNS uh, let's say the DNS uh, intelligence that they have on the firewall and they block on the firewall. The second type of one where they get the request and they forward it to towards their cloud. 
Number one, you don't know how many clouds they have. So from performance perspective, it could be a little bit risky. For on-prem and off-prem, we give you a seamless uh, experience and a seamless implementation. Hello. From an intelligence perspective, also, we have a much better intelligence whenever it comes to DNS-specific attacks. Uh, basically, the, I can sum it up with that DNS security with Palo Alto is just a feature on a firewall where Umbrella is a full-fledged implementation where you can also implement SSL decryption, content filtering, category filtering, and block DNS tunneling and block multiple malware. I am happy if you have it already, I'm happy to go head-to-head -head and we can check which one is more effective. Also, I can share with you the AV test. Uh, results where Palo Alto DNS security and the Prisma technology were both tested and you can see the efficacy that we have uh, compared to Palo Alto. Any other we have one more. Yeah, we have one more question. Can you share with us the URL where we can register and register a POC? Also where we can get prices information? So signup.umbrella.com is where you can... Uh, let me just check. Okay. So signup.umbrella.com is the website that you can, uh, let me just give me a second team. I'll share my screen again with the, so signup.umbrella.com is where you get the license. Uh, you will just put that you're a company, first name, last name, company. You have to put your company email and country and then employee account. Don't worry about the employee account. With Umbrella, you can do the POC for all your users without going and asking us uh, even. And you, whenever you get the license, you just share the email with one of Alpha Data's team, and then we can extend the license. By default, you, got, you get 14 days of free trial uh, uh, licenses. Uh, it's our medium package. It comes with everything but the Investigate console, so you will get the mostly everything, and you can try the product. I'm happy to help you at any time. Reach out to Alpha Data team and us, and I would be, I, I'm glad to support you in doing the implementation and going through the product again with you. And uh, yeah, this is where you get it. My advice is whenever you test the product, whenever you implement it, uh, forward umbrella, there's a few tricks that I can show you now. Point to umbrella and just try welcome.umbrella com this would make sure that you're pointing to umbrella so whenever you point to umbrella forward to umbrella to make sure that the traffic is going there and everything is fine just try a website welcome.umbrella.com if it gives you like that then yes you're pointing to umbrella and everything is fine and for implementation you can always go to the just i always tell my customers google deployments umbrella uh, cisco it will always be the number one here, where it gives you all the implementation from A to Z, the deployment guys. You can always do that. It's a very easy implementation, and it can give you all the data that you need. For packages, we have multiple packages. We, can, we need a session for that, to be honest. But what I can tell you that you can package per user and you can package for your visitors and guest users if you're like a retail or let's say I have airports that are doing this with me. You can package per access point where the number sometimes is very high and the num number sometimes is very low. It does not make sense to package you per the um, uh, to package uh, and to size you per the peak number of users. <clears throat> Any more questions? Yes, we have one more question. Can we have Active Directory user group based policies with yes, Umbrella? You, yes, you can. It is doable. Whenever you implement the virtual appliance and you run the script for Active Directory on your Active, uh, the Active Directory script, then automatically the policy, the Active Directory users and group will be uploaded to Umbrella. And then you can set policies per Active Directory user and per Active Directory group. Okay, we have one more question. Yeah, does Umbrella replace uh, malware bytes or McAfee? Malware bytes and McAfee are an endpoint solution, and we are acting on the network level. From a technology perspective, we're two different technologies. I would never advise to remove your antivirus and put just Umbrella. It's like saying we're going to remove the proxy uh, because we have. We're going to remove the antivirus because we have a proxy. From a technology perspective, you will still need both. 
One quick example, let's assume you have a malware that is on your USB, then Umbrella will not look into this unless you do a command and unless it does a command and control communication. If the mal if the virus does not do anything and just formats your PC, then this is where an endpoint solution would prove to be much more effective. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, but suppose if we have some service function account, how do, how to avoid that user? Uh, service function account for the Active Directory, uh, your uh, group, you mean? I didn't get the question, sorry. Yes, he's saying yes. So, the, do they connect to the internet? Simple. Yes. Uh, you can do a bypass policy if you want to bypass it. You can create a specific policy bypass for this type of users. Any user you have, you can create a bypass policy for them. We can even have a full bypass policy you can have an on-prem and off-prem policy if they are off-prem you can enable the protection if they are off-prem uh, if they are off-prem you can enable the protection if they are on-prem you can disable the protection you can have an exclusion for anything that you need so even from a security perspective you can have a global whitelist or a, or a global uh, block list the, the, let me put it in a very simple terms the solution is very flexible from a policies perspective. You can practically do anything that you need. We even can go to a to an stand where allow only mode, where we block anything and you just allow certain type of websites. Some customers did move towards this type of implementation. I would gladly, if, if the customer uh, in question is still uh, interested, I would gladly have a separate session where we can go into all the details that they want. I'm available, of course. Fine. No, I don't think we have more questions. So. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Alpha Data team and everyone for attending. I hope this uh, presentation was fruitful. Uh, feel free to reach out to the Alpha Data team and to us at any time that you need any support, and uh, we'll be more than glad to support. Thank you very much, and uh, see you soon. Thanks, Rami. Uh, yeah, Ashish Shatwar here from Alpha uh, Dubai office. Uh, so hereby, I want to thank, thank all the customers who took their precious time to attend these sessions. And we hope to have many more sessions with Cisco security as well as Cisco other technologies. And uh, our marketing team will regularly keep you updated so that you can uh, please uh, join uh, the uh, web, web, web webinars. Thank you. And uh, if you have any queries, uh, you can get in touch with uh, Biju Baskaran in our Abu Dhabi office or myself, Ashish Atwar, in Dubai office. Thank you.